Greetings from Tulli. I am Durvan Navi. Today, I have a fascinating experiment to show. The cushion catapult. And with this experiment, I will try my best to explain the science behind it. The basic setup I have used for this project is a polythene bag filled with air and small object with different masses. When an object is placed on one side of the air cushion and another object with same or different mass is dropped on the other side, the first object is catapulted away. Let's see this with an example. Let's use a pencil sharpener and an eraser first. Here, the mass of the eraser, let it be M1, is more than the mass of the sharpener, let it be M2. After placing the sharpener on one side and dropping the eraser on the other, the sharpener is launched and at the same time, we can also see that it almost travels the same height as the eraser. But if you go according to the conservation of energy, M1GH1 is equal to M2GH2, the sharpener should travel more. But that's not the case here. We will see why that happens after completing all cases. Now, let's use a bouncy ball. Let the mass be M3 and a stumper ball with mass M4. Here, M4 is way higher than M3. After following the same procedure used in case 1, we can clearly see that the bouncy ball is catapulted so high that it goes out of the screen and this is understandable because of the difference in masses of both objects. What will happen when we take two objects of almost the same mass and the same cross-section area? Will they travel the same height? Let's see. Now, there is a steel cap and a plastic cap which almost follows the above condition. Let's look at two cases simultaneously where we change the dropped object and the catapult object. Here, after dropping the two different objects from the same height, we can also see the other two launched objects reaching the same height. Now, let's see the science behind it. We can use conservation of energy here, but it should also include energy lost due to air resistance, sound and heat. Therefore, we could not get the desired results in experiment 1 and 3. Therefore, we can say that M1GH1 is equal to M2GH2 plus energy lost and M3GH3 is equal to M4GH4 plus energy lost. Thus, we can find the energy lost by taking measurements of masses, initial height and gain height of the objects. The important principle due to which the above experiments worked is Pascal's law. Pascal's law states that any change in pressure applied to one part of a confined fluid results in an equal change in pressure throughout the fluid. Therefore, it's better to use an object with more mass and less area of impact as a dropper and an object with less mass and more area of impact as a launcher. When the dropped object falls on one side of the air cushion, it occupies the empty space inside the air cushion which is transferred to the other side causing impulse on the object making it fly. Therefore, it, sh it shouldn't work when there is too much pressurized air inside the air cushion like this case. We can also find the exit velocity of the catapult object. Neglecting the energy lost due to air resistance, we can conserve energy from the point where the object is catapulted to the point where it only has gravitational potential energy and no kinetic energy. That is, half mv square is equal to mgh. Therefore, we get that exit velocity v is equal to root of 2gh. That was all about the cushion catapult. I hope you liked this video and explanation. Thank you.